so nervous. I'm like, <sighs> I'm interviewing someone today that I think is incredible and amazing. They were named Time Magazine's first ever kid of the year. Her name is Gitanjali Rao. That's right, I can pronounce it. I stalked her, I read everything about her. I'm so excited, I found her, she's a fan of mine. And I'm like, <laughs> so I'm gonna go talk to her right now, let's go. Meg, she's off. The, the TV, TV's the TV's off. off. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. I'm going to my kid room. If Patanjali was here, there would be no tech issues. She would create a technology to help us Zoom interviews. to talk to you. I've been watching your videos since I was eight. Like, our family religiously watches your videos. Gitanjali, I'm so in awe of you. I think you're so, so incredible. I need to ask you just right off the bat, a kind of like a brown person question. Forgive the stereotypical brown person question, but I just need to know, are your parents just always bragging about you? Like, what does that feel like? Are they just always like, our daughter is amazing, she's a genius, we're so proud? I mean, yeah, and then at the same time, they also call me high maintenance, so I really don't know what to expect, but um, I get like a range of emotions, but they are very proud of me, and yeah, I'm, I'm just so grateful for just to have supporting family members. What could they possibly nag you about? Cleaning room, washing dishes, of course. Loading laundry. Oh, the worst. Um, all like all the normal things. Everything is so bad. I, like everything other than just in my room is a lot of work for me. I love that you're a genius and you have all the same problems as me. Oh my god, scientists, they're just like us. Um, I want to talk about a few things. First off, congratulations. First ever kid of the year, Time magazine. Has that sunk in or does it feel surreal? Are you still like, oh, I'm not really sure what that feels like, or are you just like, oh, I, I know I'm the bomb? I've been saying for the past couple of interviews that I've been living in a fever dream. Like this doesn't seem real at all. But you have so many other accomplishments too. I can't even like, they're all on this card, but I can't even. So wait, when you wake up, do you feel that like, oh, I am a, I am a genius? No, it's more of like, I'm just a kid doing what she loves. And that's what makes it so much more exciting to be going through like this whole process of talking to people, sharing my stories, because it's stuff that I love to do and stuff that I'm passionate about. You're so modest that we're so different because if I was you, I'd be like, suckers! I feel like I want to tell you this. I'm going to automatically just make it so we're related because we're both brown. So I'm going to say like, you're my younger sister and I'm your older sister, obviously. Older sister, not auntie, don't get it twisted. But I feel like I need to tell you, no, you I should it. super <laughs> lean into that. I feel like don't even be modest. You should be like, I'm, I am a genius. I am a 15 year old genius. I would, can you just tell me you're a genius? I want to hear it. I just want to hear it. Okay, I'm a genius. Hey, my little sister's a genius. There you go. You should own that. Wear that on your back. That is amazing. Not only do you have all these awesome accolades, is it true you were a Marvel superhero? Yeah, it's so crazy. They made this 30 minute like short documentary about me. I never knew they could make me look so cool. Um, but then they gave me a jacket and a comic book and I was blown out of my mind. Too. I want to see the jacket. It's like a lab coat. So it's like a really fancy lab. It's so cool. I feel like you should wear it. Are you wearing you gonna wear it? I feel like you should wear it. I'll wear it. Oh my god, you're the You're so cool. So you invented, I don't even know the right words. I'm so nervous to say words around you. I'm like, is it innovated? Is it invented? But you created a device that detects contaminated water and yeah. you were inspired mm -hmm. by the flint the flint crisis the flint michigan crisis and so you did it at 15 right i actually created the device when i was 11. okay <laughs> talk to me about this device so um my device is called tetis and it helps to detect lead contamination in water faster and more inexpensive than the current tools out there and it sends all the data to your mobile phone on an app that i created did you say an app that you created yeah. All right, guys, I'm wrapped here. I need to, I need to look <laughs> Okay, so what is, how does it work? There's this cartridge that's within the device and it looks like a stick and you dip that into the water you want to test. And if there's any lead in the water, it binds to chloride ions that I included in the specially treated nanotube and it forms these lead chloride molecules. And that's all displayed on your phone in the app that I created. <laughs> huh. 
You also have created, again, don't know the word, created, invented, Bluetooth, I don't know, something about cyberbullying. Tell me about this. So I created a service called Kindly, which is able to detect and prevent cyberbullying at an early stage in order to be able to go in and identify phrases and words that could be considered bullying. It detects certain words before you press send so that the person can reconsider, like, do I actually want to say this? It's able to let you know to kind of take a step back and rephrase what you want to say. You are amazing. You are my hero. Um, okay, so then aside from this, you also, in your seemingly spare time, wrote a book. And it is called, Tessa, A Young Innovator's Guide to STEM. Yeah, so Young Innovator's Guide to STEM is basically a book for any student, educator, and parent who really wants to jumpstart their innovation journey. And yeah, it comes out in March, so I'm super, super excited about it. I'm super excited about it too. I can't wait to Google every word in it to figure out what it means. But you also said, am I wrong, that it's also related to your brother in some way. That was another book I wrote. No, you're <laughs> it was another. It was another book she wrote. I'm kind of shocked about how you guys sound. <laughs> Okay, I'm not lying when I said that I stalk you. I'm genuinely fascinated by you. So that's why I'm not even like these cards. I'm like, I don't, I don't need the card. Get out of my face card. I know this person and I adore her. So anytime I go to a family party, my aunts and uncles, like I couldn't escape it. They'd always come up to me and be like, oh, Lil, you should make a video about uh, this, this, this. So I get the nonstop video suggestions. So I need to ask you, do your uncles and aunties come up to you like, you need to invent this thing. This thing right here, you need to invent. Do they ever say this to you? Honestly, they've kind of lost track of what I've been doing for the past like three or four years. But like family reunions are always an adventure because I get like a list that I have to like check off. Like I've gotten cancer, I've gotten diabetes. I've, I, like, I, it kind of stresses me out having to like go through that list. But recently I've met a lot more aunties and uncles that I never knew existed. So I'm of course. Time. Of course, because when you become the Times Kid of the Year, every auntie they're coming out of bushes like this, like, hello, Gadanjali, hello, you don't know me, I'm your auntie Seema. I mean, you would get, of course, I got a lot more cousins when I started getting my little late night show. Suddenly I had Bobby cousin over here, I'm like, who are you? I don't even know you.